man. There would have been no boy's own and no Westlife, but we should not hold that against him. <laughs> Before he comes out, let's take a look at the greatest boy band the world has ever seen. Great to see you again. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Now, last time Gary was on the show, it was when Take That were getting back together and you announced the tour. Take That were back on, on the road. Uh, how did that tour go? Was it, was it what you hoped it would be? Did it go as well as you'd hoped? Well, the thing that worried us, especially when we came on your show, everyone kept asking us what the dance routine is going to be like. We were all thinking, oh, we're a bit older now, you know. It's not going to be quite as good, this. Because how long ago was it since you'd been together performing? What was the gap in between? Ten years. Ten years? Yeah. That's a while. Yeah. And the f anyway, the first day in rehearsals, um, Jason came in and he spun on his head six times to start <laughs> with. That was the first move, and we thought, I think we're going to be all right. Yeah, Remember, Jason, how did you cope with the routine? Not too bad. Yeah? Not too bad. Okay. Yeah. You still I, got the moves? Do you know what? I actually had, I had my wife with me on tour as well, as one of the dancers. So I was getting tuition after hours as well. When so. you say tuition, what is that? What are you talking about? <laughs> Use your imagination. Uh, okay, so you went on the tour and, and it and it went pretty well. Uh, you're doing a new album, I believe. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. I made a new album over the summer. Um, in fact, can I get a plug in for next Tuesday? We're on the Chris Moyles show at the first exclusive play of the new single. Plug away, and we'll edit it out in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so this is uh, so it's a proper commitment now, then, because obviously you get back together and. and you know, people think, okay, they're testing the water. You know, mm -hmm. they work together for many years. They're seeing if it works out. You went on tour, you loved it. You're going to stick together as a band. You're going to make it a, a going concern. Well, the thing for us, we we never even announced we're going to do a new record. I think we're just taking every day as it comes. Really, we really, really enjoyed the tour. Um, we had a great time doing that, and we've actually really, really enjoyed recording and writing together because the the writing I always did in the past. And we've all been in together as a band, and it's been so great doing oh, that. I guess it will feel a little fairer down the line as well, because I know, obviously, the person who writes the songs really winds up earning most of the money when they hit. Isn't that the case in the recording uh, business? It's very, it, the writing is very lucrative. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it just, I guess it just means that we share everything. So, so previously, the early albums, you must have made most of the money. Mm -hmm. But now, if you have another album, then maybe Mark can move out that caravan. Would I be right? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Uh, now, let's talk about your weight, because um, in the back... <laughs> look, because look at you there, there's nothing of you there. Look at that, look. look I mean, look first. at all... How gay were you guys back then? We were definitely the gayest straight band in history. <laughs> you were, obviously, of the band, it seems you were the one who struggled the most with keeping your weight and keeping your physique in the way that was required for someone in that band. And when the band ended, you really kind of... Boop, yeah. <laughs> That's a medical term for it, but... <laughs> That's what a doctor would do if you talk about it. You've had weight loss, or what we call Yeah. Because I've had that as well. I've been up and down as well. So, uh, so what happens there? I mean, you, now presumably you, you diet all the time, or what do you do? Pretty much, actually. I mean, I'm, I, mean I, don't, I don't know about you, but I, you know, if I don't concentrate on what I'm eating, I get to the end of the week and I've put on half a stone. It just seems to just go on me like that. Because, well, there's a picture of you. I think that must be... This is from your book, uh, so I know you are my chance, but that must be when you're about your largest. How much did you weigh then? Do you know what? I wasn't my largest there. That... that I was my largest about two months after I was 16 stone eight. So what, you ate that baby? <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> He's just in the pool saying, bring us some ketchup, I'm starving. <laughs> I've caught one. Um, 16 stone eight, and that's big, because you're about what? You're about 5'2", five 5'3", five so that's a big weight. <laughs> Cuban heels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Spotted. <laughs> no, you're not. Uh, so that, that was pretty big then. And did you feel... Uh, well, what did you feel when you were that weight? Well, it's a, re it's a transitional period because, I, I mean, just before our son was born, I got dropped by the label. Um, and basically, you find yourself, you wake up one morning, you've been busy for eight years doing the most amazing things, travelling around the world, and all of a sudden, there's nothing happening. 
and you, you've, you've either got to, you know, go away and work it out, uh, or, you know, you do what I did. And we, we actually took our son and we moved to America for a while to get out of England. Well, it was kind of weird, though, because people sort of really went for you in a weird way, didn't they? Because I, I suppose everyone knew that you were the one who had the kind of most obvious talent in the band and that you wrote the songs. I mean, everyone, all of you, you, you guys were gifted performers, but you were writing the songs as well. And, and everyone, I think, thought, okay, Gary's going to go into this huge success. He's going to be another George Michael. He's going to be an Elton John type figure. Uh, and, of course, it was, it was Robbie mm -hmm. um, that people warmed to and had that huge success. And, and you seem to become a really odd target for people. And, and I know you don't know why that is. No one really knows why it is, but it was kind of pretty relentless, wasn't it? Well, I think, and eventually when, I mean, what happened was with me and Rob was it became a competition and that was the worst thing that could have happened for me because all that happened is I just lost my confidence and then, of course, you end up finishing your own career. Um, and that's why I think, you know, that when the tour came around last year, it was such a relief again to be able to be involved in music and, and do what we all love to do. Yeah. Um, and it, it was great for that. But you weren't not involved in music. I know you went off and you wrote any number of hit songs for other people, didn't you? I mean, you, you kept that side of your career yep. going pretty strong, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I had a studio at home and, um, you know, I've, I love music so much. I love to be involved in it. And basically, I went behind the scenes for four or five years, which is actually when I, I started to write the book then. Because originally the book was going to be a, a, a thin thing. It was going to be called Backstage for Good. Yeah. Saying I'm not, I'm never so going to be an I'm artist never again. Form again. Yeah. Uh, well, it kind of gives it a much nicer ending and a much kind of it's a more interesting book as a result, I think. But but certainly you get the feeling, and I've read the book and I really enjoyed it. Um, you really get the feeling of what it must have been like because you talk about the day you received the phone call saying you were dropped from your label and you were on the way to an interview, weren't you? And you turned around <laughs> and went back home thinking I have nothing more to say. Yeah. Uh, and it, it, you really get a sense of just how that, that your world just changed instantly. At that moment. And I, th I, th I mean, but basically, you know, the, the, the up and down of the book is great, I think, for nowadays because celebrities just seem to come and go. And I think that, you know, we, we watch them for a while, we're fascinated by them, it's on to the next. Yeah. What happens to that person then? Where do they go and what do they do? And I think that's, for me, it was the most interesting bit of the book to write. Obviously, people are fascinated by your relationship with Robbie, even to this day, mm -hmm. because it seems kind of weird, doesn't it? Uh, Robbie, uh, you guys went on tour, and Robbie seemed to patch things up with you, and you seemed to, you guys made the effort, and he made the effort, and it, it, it seemed that everything was okay again. And Rob did us a film piece for our tour that we played every night. It was like a hologram. We projected it onto water. Um, and that was like the first step, I thought, in the right direction. It was good of him to do that. And then we met him halfway through the tour. In fact, we were all convinced he was going to come on one night. He was talking about dates and all the rest of it. But it just, it just never happened. Well, he came on this show and I said, are you going to join Ted Aaron tour? And he said, yeah. And we, we had a kind of sort of jokey bet that if I beat him at tennis, which I would have done, <laughs> right, without doubt, because he's like a podgy little kid from Stoke, you know, and I'm a <laughs> semi-professional athlete. <laughs> uh, 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 and then he, and I phoned him, I said, you want to do this thing? He said, oh, yeah, I'm a bit busy, man, at the moment. Can you speak to me like that? I don't know if you noticed. Know. He said, oh, I'm a bit busy doing this and that. All right. Now, that's Liam Gallagher, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Anyway, he said, I'm a bit busy at the moment, and we never got it together, we never did that. And um, I got the feeling that he was, when he said that he was going to join your stage, I think he believed it, I think yeah. he meant it. And, then, and I think every day is another day for Rob as well, it seems. As so. opposed to, for us, every day is... <laughs> You're right. Anyway, let's move You're on. Right. There's yeah. more.